All right. So, Coach Semko, um, first things first. Uh, odd days we're living in right now, Mr. Semko. Mr. Head Coach Joey Semko for the Tiffin Dragons. Um, how you doing, man? How, how's everything going? I'm all right, man. Um, odd days for sure. This is uh, this is you know new waters for a lot of us. Uh, I've been through a lot of stuff I guess, in my life, but nothing quite like this. So um, you guys, you know, I've been talking to a lot of D1 guys. I talked to Haywald. He's a D3 guy. Their tournament was in Iowa. Your tournament was in South Dakota, Sioux Falls. And then um, the D1s is right, would have been right now in Minnesota. So everything was over there in that, that central, north central part of the, the country, uh, you know, whether it was South Dakota, Minnesota, or Iowa. You guys were on the mat. What was going on when you got the call? Yeah, so um, it was pretty crazy, man. We uh, we had just finished our coaches' meetings. Um, the dudes had all come back over. Uh, we were getting ready to – we were we were warming up um, for our last weight cut. And uh, uh, Jackie Paquette from UND, um, she walked out. And as soon as I saw her, I knew what it was, man. Her eyes were bloodshot red, and, and uh, she – shakily asked me if I could help get the coaches together and uh so I yelled out you know all head coaches and as they were walking over all the kids kind of stopped uh warming up and um went their own to their their little groups and um she told us and and I looked over and and I saw Trey and Hayden and and you know my two seniors that were there uh just balling it was it was it was chaos man we were 15 hours from weigh-ins you know and um I, I know that in the scope of everything, right? That's uh, it, it's somewhat, you know. Hey, it was a wrestling match, but man, that's that was their whole lives. So. You, you know, and you had Hayden Bra Brawny made it for the first time, the nation's leading pinner, and that was a guy I know that you were obviously looking for to make some noise for you. You had two returning national finalists, the returning champ and a returning runner up. So you had those guys, right? You got all these different, you know, you got a lot of different stars. You got a freshman who can win it. But everybody yeah. else is in the same boat as you, Joey. So, so I, I yep. at the end of the day, what I've heard, you know, Tervel Delagne, I've said it. You know, misery loves company. I, I, I don't know if it was him or Colin Moore, but everybody's in your same boat, man. Yep. Uh, and to tell you the truth, Zeb, one of the the coolest things that that I saw, um, and my assistant Dustin Kirk, uh, that dude doesn't get enough credit in this this wrestling world, man. He's he's a he's a superstar. Um, you know. I, I talked to the guys and uh, he, this is what he said. He said, guys, the, the best part is tonight you'll see the community come together. You'll see the big family come together. And, uh, you know, we always talk about our team being a family, but um, we went down to this restaurant right down the, the, the road from the hotel. And um, there was, you know, 40, 50 wrestlers in there and, and all consoling each other. And, uh, you know, rivals became best friends that night. It was, it, it just, you know how wrestling is, man. It was beautiful to see everybody come together and support each other. And it is true. Misery loves company. Um, we're all, we're all feeling it. And, you know, uh, like I said, at the end of the day with everything else going on, you know, we're, we're talking about wrestling matches and we're talking about basketball games and we're talking about those kind of things not happening. Right. Um, there's bigger stuff going on in the world, but this is, this is what we train these dudes for, right? This is what we wrestle for to, to be better men, be better humans. Um, and to, and to learn how to do life. I mean, it sucks, but we're going to do what we do if we lose a wrestling match. We're going to get up, we're going to go back to work, and we're going to figure it out, right? Yeah, and, and, you know, like, there's so much more. The biggest picture I've gotten out of it yet, you know, talking to Colin Moore, Colin Moore's like, hey, all my failure in life's been wrestling matches. So I don't think he's lost anyone close to him. Um, but, but Chandler Menard out of Ashland, he really put everything into perspective for me. Um, I don't know if you saw his interview, but or, or if you know anything about Chandler, um, he lost a brother to a, a, a fentanyl overdose. Yep. So when that guy yep. started talking about that, I was like, okay, th that's real. That's not that this isn't right. real, man. I'm not saying this isn't real, but losing, you know, the mentor, the person that he he shared bunk beds with his whole life, um, his brother that that was why he wrestled and. Why a lot of us wrestle, it's a family sport. Um, that one really put it into perspective for me, I think, Joey. And, and you know, telling your guys' stories is so important. Me and you know, you've got a whole nother 
end of it that we've talked about, this is, and Jim Anderson kind of touched on it, but this is really going to affect a lot of you guys, you small guys. This is really going to affect you and your enrollment. It's not going to affect Penn State. It's not going to affect Iowa. It's not going to affect uh, affect Ohio State, Wisconsin. It's not really going to affect those schools with the ginormous budgets. It's really going right. to affect you guys. Obviously, your Edinburghs, your Lock Havens, your Bloomsburg, who you know Clarion, who've got those smaller, uh, you know, uh, if you look at like Riders, a small school. That's what's really going to affect. What's the impact going to be on you guys economically at Tiffin? Well, a um, couple things there. So first off, Chandler Menard, um, I, I want to touch on that real quick. Phenomenal young man. Um, going to do great things in life. Uh, another thing that I love about this sport, um, and it's kind of cool, like Tiffin, the people at Tiffin, when, when I got there, didn't understand this. and I'd talk about kids from other schools, and they'd be like, man, how do you know that kid? Oh, it's, you know, it's... Uh, hours spent in the barn up at BTW or, or whatever. I mean, these, this, this sport's different, right? So, um, yes, that to put it in perspective, you're hundred percent, right? Uh, this is wrestling and, and it's, there's much bigger things, which is kind of leading into your second question there. Um, truth is, 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 is like you said, some of those schools are almost like the corporations when, when we were in the last recession, too big to fail. Right. Um, then there's schools like us that, that, you know, we are enrollment driven and, and we need our students and, and we work together with, with that to make things happen. Um, it's, it, we're in full force. We're recruiting still. We're talking to kids. I mean, we can't sign anybody right now. The NCAA has got, got our hands tied with that. Right. Uh, until they come out with the decision on what they're going to do with eligibility and things, I think they're going to keep us locked down as far as sending out NLIs and financial aid agreements and things like that. Um, at the end of the day, basically, yeah, if we don't if we don't continue to recruit and we don't continue to, to put the work in, I mean, yes, we would be in, in some financial hardships. I mean, we're um, we are a small school and, and we depend on tuition dollars. We depend on, um, you know, uh, all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a struggle. This is scary. And it's scary for not just athletics or, or colleges or anything like that. It's this is scary for the nation. I mean. There's factories that aren't open. There's, there's, uh, you know, restaurants. There's servers that, you know, missed out on $53 million the weekend of the Arnold because of this, right? Like, uh, this is crazy. The, the, the economic impact this is going to have on our country um, is insane. And, and I hope that there's some kind of, some kind of relief coming to, to institutions and, and corporations. I mean, we're, we're all going to need some help. You know, um, when I look at your guys, your guys wrestle this wide open, crazy style. I, I color, covered the uh, GMAC duels, and you got these guys who just, they're kitchen sink guys, man. You got guys who love to pin people. They put up big scores, yep. big points. Not a lot of 3 2 matches when you go watch Tiffin. Not that you guys can't win 3 yeah. 2 matches. And you get these guys who are like fringe guys slash freaks. Um, I yeah. think, obviously, um, when you look at Mason, between Brawny and Mason, they've led both led the country in pins, haven't they? Yeah, so we actually um, – Tiffin – someone from Tiffin has won that for the last uh, four years. And the first year they kept track of it, Garrett actually had the most pins, but he wasn't an All-American. And, um, uh, dude, he, he needed he needed um, to be one, I guess, at the time or something. So we've actually held the, the most pins for the last five years. Um, but it went Garrett Gray, uh, our first national champ, then Hayden uh, won it the next year, then Curly won it the uh, last year when he won nationals, then Curly or uh, Hayden won it again this year. Who's Curly? People don't know who Curly is. Who's Curly? Nick Mason. Nick Mason. Um, who's Curly? Champ. That's a great question, man. Nick Mason, the the dude, the uh, the one year old puppy, if you will. Um, he's just he's the guy. He's 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 that kid, man. He's Nick Mason. <laughs> He, but Nick Mason is NCAA champ last year at 197 for you guys. He's your second national yep. champ. Um, Trey Grine, fr uh, Fremont kid. Trey was runner-up last year at 57. He returned to the tournament again this year. Um, and then you had a freshman, a, a freak freshman, yep. Chris Donathan. I think Chris Donathan can win the N uh, NCAA title, no question, for you guys. So that's kind of funny, man. We um, I got a phone call last night. Uh, from from another guy who does some rankings and, and some things like that and um 
you know, he said that was the matchup that he was so excited to see was Chris Eddins versus Chris Donathan in the semis. And uh, the truth is, is, I mean, that's the matchup we wanted. You know, Eddins is who Trey lost to last year in the finals. Um, and uh, style-wise, you know, I, I, I thought Chris had a great shot at, uh, at taking him out from, from returning back to the finals. And um, I – at the tournament, I can't tell you, you know, we were out there getting ready. Like I said, I, I probably had at least five people come up to me and talk about that match. Um, yeah, that kid, he's special, man. He's he's a kid that, you know, he's he's tough to beat regardless, let alone, you know, when there's some pressure on it. Or And, and Trey was kind of like a big brother to him, so he was talking trash to Trey all year about kicking Eddin's butt and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, we were, we were excited, man. It was We were ready to go. You know, you, you look at it, you guys do have this wide open style. Where's this wide open style come from, from, from Tiffin University in Tiffin, Ohio? <laughs> um, well, if you ask Dustin, he says that comes from me. Um, but it's really the dudes, man. We don't, you know, like, like my thought is this, like, what's the point of doing it? If you're, if, if I'm going out there, I, okay. Uh, I guess let me back up. Um, let me say this first. I can't stand watching boring wrestling. What I mean by that is, like, if I wanted to watch paint dry, I'd paint my walls, right? I don't want to win three to two. I want to leave no doubt in anybody's mind when I wrestle them that they wrestled me, right? I wanted to wake up in the morning and be like, dude, I'm so sore. Man, I don't ever want to wrestle that Simcoe guy again. That was always my mindset when I competed. Um, and it's not to be a jerk or anything like that, right? It's like, you're going out there to compete. Why hold back, right? So... That was always the way I was, and when I when I look at dudes, when I'm recruiting, when I'm you know talking to kids, like I want kids that absolutely want to have fun with this, and and they want to they want to go compete, and they want to let it fly. I mean, and we say that all the time, um, let it fly. You know, uh, why not us? Those kind of things, and um, it, it's really all about that, man. You know, high flyers, full senders. That's what they were called. They called us that at uh, regionals. <laughs> high flyers, full senders. So. I dig it. Okay, so when you guys, um, you, I don't, I hate how your regional is set up. Uh, you got a really tough Same, regional. Buddy. We've talked about this before. Um, really tough regional. Uh, moving forward, how many of those four got you? Had four national qualifiers, right? Five. Uh, Brian Laverne. Oh, um, Laverne. So had 49, 57, 65, 74, and ninety-seven. Okay, how many return? Three. So three return. Who all returns? Uh, we got Donathan back, uh, Laverne back, and then, um, man, I can't, Curly back. Mason's back. Mason was so, national champ as a sophomore. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yep. And then we got, we had, uh, we actually had our heavyweight. I mean, he was legitimately two seconds away from going to the tournament as well. So he ended up fourth. Um, you know, I mean, we, we had, we, we should have actually probably sent seven, um, you know, but we ended up with five and, and. So we returned three of the qualifiers, and um, you know we got some other dudes that are right there on the cusp of going too. Got it. So the future is bright for Tiffin, right? We'd like to think that the future is bright for Tiffin, but I think Ann Racy had something there when he talked about how this is going to hurt. Like, there's people who are not going to be able to send their kids to school next year. Yeah, that, that's a thing, um, man. And not every kid's a scholarship kid. In talking to Mark Haywald, not you know a lot of his depends on. What the FAFSA comes back in the financial aid, and a lot of your does is, yours does as well. Yes, yes, it does. And you know, at the end of the day, I think that's something that that we as coaches need to be responsible, and we need to you know talk to our our PSAs and our our current student athletes about. Um, you know, in the recruiting process, it's hard, man. That that's the hardest part about this. You know, is is um, when it comes to the finances, like it, school's expensive, period. And, and it seems like it doesn't matter where you go, um, whether you're going to a state school or a private school, you know, it, it's expensive. Some are less than others, sure. Um, but yeah, like, and you're right, Zeb, this is, this is going to hurt. This is going to be tough. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're like right now, I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of kids, right? I can't, again, I can't sign them right now um, because of the, the rules on us at the moment. Um, but, uh, it, it, it's going to affect all of us, all the, especially the smaller schools. Um, and, you know, we got to hope some of these kids, like this is prime recruiting season for, for D2 and D3 and NAIA, right? This is where 
a lot of those guys that might have thought maybe they were going to get something from a Division One school don't, um, you know, and they end up coming our way or whatever. And, um, you know, some of them haven't even thought out of FAFSA yet. And, and now we're sitting here talking about the government's, you know, today. I mean, now, now we're, we're voting on stipends or, or a stimulus package for the economy so it doesn't collapse, right? So it, it is scary, and it's, it's, it's scary to think about next year. It's scary to think about two years from now and, and what this could mean financially for a lot of us. Yeah, I mean, that that's the craziest thing about it. From 2008, 2009, I went from being able to retire at 53 to now I got to go to 59 and a half, 60. What's this going to do? This is yeah. going to push me at least 65, probably. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm probably going to retire when I uh, don't wake up one day in the wrestling room. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I'm probably going to be there. So I dirt retire. Nap. That's cool. Dirt I'm nap is when you get to retire, <laughs> huh? Dirt nap. Um, yeah. What do you think about the sixth year? They're talking six year, and I know you want Hayden Brawny back. You know, I know you want Trey Grind back for a six year. I know you want those guys back. I know those guys are they're 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 good guys. They're they're both going to be like law enforcement or work with DEA or whatever they're going to do or Homeland Security or whatever they're going to do. Right? They're good guys. They're whether they're going to be firemen. They're gonna they're gonna serve the public. They're gonna be good. They're good guys. You know. Yep. What do you think of a six year? So this is my thing. Um, Again, I think this is much bigger than wrestling, right? Like like everything that's going on, this is much bigger than just wrestling or, or sports. Um, and I just want them to be able to have the option, right? Like uh, I know Trey and Hayden both have um, pretty decent jobs lined up, uh, you know, for when they graduate. And whether whether Trey would have won it, he was the number one ranked 57. I believe he would have. Um, was he the Hayden one seed? On the podium or wins it. Was he the one seed? Yeah, he was the yeah. Yep. What was Mason? He was the one seed. Uh, he was actually the fifth seed, man. So, Love it. so he had got hurt. Um, he wasn't, he didn't wrestle since, uh, national duels. He wrestled okay. the first match of national duels and then, uh, hasn't wrestled and ended up winning his region. I mean, like I said, it's curly, man. He, he's a dude. Um, but yeah, it, anyway, back to it, I, I guess at the end of the day, I just wanted to have the option. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think, that's kind of one of the things is that's going out there right now is they're saying, well, they had a season. Well, technically, you know, like your championship is your season. Like, let me ask you this. Zeb, who won, uh, who won the Michigan state open in the freshman sophomore division at 141 pounds? Nobody cares. Nobody exactly. Cares. So, Nobody cares. And I don't, and, yeah. And that's, that's not to be disrespectful to who did. Cause I can't tell you, I don't remember, but I know um, that, Hey, I know I, that uh, I think Pletcher beat Demas. I think that that was – I can tell you that's the only yeah. result I know from the Michigan State Open. I think right. Pletcher beat Demas, right? I, maybe we know that. Right. That's about it, right? Yeah, but that's the thing. Is like like this championship is what a lifetime of training is all about, you know, and, and uh, that's the other thing about it too is like, you know, I, I don't want to say this in, the, in, in a negative connotation in any way, like, I don't think one sport's better than another sport, yada, 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 harder, this, that. Like, But I do know this. Like, Anybody who's ever wrestled would tell you that these kids deserve another shot at this championship. Um, it's There is no pro for us. There is no – I mean, you can go get your brains beat in in a cage, right? Uh, that's not fun. Um, you, you know, I've been punched, right? Unless, you, unless you're doing the beating. Stuff. Unless you're doing the beating and then eventually right. eventually it comes around and gets you, though, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, the, that's not for everybody. Right. Like, and, and, um, you know, the, these dudes, this is their pro, like this is their, this is their, this is it for them. Um, you know, and I, I just want them to have the option or, you know, let's get real crazy. Let's do, let's wait till June and let's meet somewhere in the middle and let's, let's rerun the brackets, give them, you know, five pounds or something and give us a couple weeks to train and let's go see who's who. Right. Like, there you go, back to full sender, high flyers, right? <laughs> you guys would fare pretty well there, I think. Uh, you know, like, uh, talk to Mike Matten today, Dr. Mike Matten. You know, he's a BTW guy, so I'm sure you've had some interactions with Mike. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously a great guy, man. Um, he says this is no joke, dude. He, he, he was yeah. like, this is for real. And then I thought to myself, we're talking about a thing that's going to kill potentially less than 1%. What mm -hmm. are we gonna do when there's a when there's a fifty fifty bubonic plague type deal? What are we gonna do, man? What are we gonna do? 
<laughs> what are we going to do? You know, and we're, we're about yeah, to hit that. Just, we're about to be in this, like, this almost lockdown situation that I've talked about right. some a couple people about and what I'm hearing about with, uh, you know, potential, like, martial law curfew type stuff. So, uh, yeah, man, it, like you're saying, this, it's, it's on, the, the future's up in the air, man. It is. And, and, you know, Zed, the scary part of that is, like, what do you do? Um, you know, and we, we teach – we teach this all the time. Like you control the controllables, right? And, and like nothing going on right now we have control of. And that's, I think that more than anything is the hard part for some of these, these dudes, especially younger dudes. I mean, when, if I was, if I was 22, 23 years old, I probably would be going absolutely bonkers and, and so upset that I think get that shot. Right. As I sit here as an almost 40 year old, it's a, it's a much different perspective. Right. Um, so like realistically, like what, what would we do? What could we do? What can we do? Right? Like we can exactly what wrestling's taught us. We're going to, we're going to hunker down. We're going to do what's best and, and we're going to move forward. Right. Um, it, it's scary, man. I, I don't, I don't know what else to say. This is, this is scary times. And, and Doc Matten, um, actually my wife work at this, you know, at the same hospitals a couple of days a week. And, um, you know, she's, she's on the front line of this thing too, man. And, and it's, it's scary. You know, she's been, phone calls late at night early in the morning meetings this that the other and it's um it, it's a it's a very scary time for for those those people out there on the front line like our nurses our our uh secretaries and, and hucks that are in the in the hospitals to the doctors and the, everybody you know doing this work i mean it's 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 scary and, and our, our our thoughts and prayers and, and all that stuff is with them right yeah, La last thing I gotta get, uh, I gotta call with Coach Goodale coming up. So I'm not gonna cut you short because I do want, I gotta hear this stuff. We had Maddox Simcoe qualified for the state tournament, right? Yeah. Freshman Maddox. Yep. Joey qualified last year. Did, Joey didn't qualify this year. No, he he qualified as a sophomore and as a junior, um, and then and ended up this year. Okay, so he, he did not qualify this year. Um, wrestled. No, he wrestled really well, man. Um, Took a took a loss in the quarters and then lost to a dude that he beat I think five times this year. Uh, you know, I, I could get into that, but remember when I was talking about how we like to wrestle and I can't stand watching other people wrestle? It was one of those type of matches, yeah. a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. Um, so that was that was like it was very frustrating. Um, but it is what it is. You know, uh, he wrestled great. He's gonna have a career. I'm not gonna say where, but uh, he's got some awesome things happening for him. Um, and then, yeah, my little dude, he, uh, my youngest, he, he qualified um, as a freshman. So it was a pretty good year, man, all in all. Okay. Biggest thing for a lot of you and the Ohio coaches, all divisions, you really gauge kids on the Ohio State tournament. You don't have that gauge yeah. this year. You're not going to get – and that really is going to hurt a lot of your seniors because you guys get a lot of guys who are late in the gamers. You get guys who, mm -hmm. who maybe maybe a dude who, take, who makes the finals or he wins it, and you guys get him, and you were on him before anybody else was on him. Well, now there's not going to be that verification for some of those recruits, you know, and, and I know you can't right. talk about recruits, but I can talk about, I think my nephew Wyatt was like right there. He's 20 minutes from you guys. He's a good guy you could get. I know you can't really talk about it, but that's a guy where we're not going to get that verification as to whether he could win or not. And, and, you know, like you can talk about the Simcoe boys, but you can't really talk about Wyatt, but I felt that way about Wyatt. You know, I felt like Wyatt was there. He had a really good guy. The, the Duca kid's really good from St. Johnny's and Ironman plates are returning runner up, but. I think that we, you know, that was going to be the state final match. But we're not going to get to see that now. We're not going to see, get to see Maddox Simcoe make up moves and, and, and make a breakthrough as a freshman. You know what I mean? Like, those are the yeah. things that I want to see. And not to mention that they're my guys. They're my club guys. But we're not trained. They're obviously your guys, you know, and they're potentially one that, you know, you can get both of them. But, like, that, you guys aren't going to get that validation. And I know you can't really speak to Wyatt, but you can talk about Maddox, right? Like, we want to see that. Yeah. That's what you guys want to see out of guys. You want va validation. So, so one of the things that I, I love to watch, and and I can, I mean, I guess this is toward Wyatt or toward Maddox or toward any wrestler, right? In general, um, the thing that I love to see about the Ohio State tournament are, are the dudes that, like, one of two things happen: either they overperform from what people thought they were supposed to do, or, um, you know, they they might take that tough loss, like maybe they were supposed to make the finals and they lost, but how'd they storm back through the bracket, right? Um, and, and you're right. The state tournament is beautiful because what you see is you find the kids that still have chips on their shoulder. Um, and I'll talk about one kid uh, from the past, actually an old Carver boy, uh, 
Jared Chambers, right? Um, that dude, uh, I knew who, I knew the name, didn't really know him. I was still new to the area, kind of, right? Like getting back into this area. And um, I had uh, Jake Kramer was here and we went down to watch his brother wrestle, right? And, and I wanted to check this Chambers kid out. And I watched him uh, lose a close one and then storm back through and take fifth. And he was in a, uh, like a probably minute and a half scramble in the third period, man, trying to, you know, get this takedown. He ends up getting it, ties the match, yada, yada, yada. I saw heart, right? So, like, the, the validation of the state tournament is huge. And, um, you know, Jared went on to be be a qualifier for us and, and win a ton of big matches and carry us through duels. So, like, yes, uh, to your point, um, it, it stinks, but, you know, we're going to keep doing what we do and, and kind of – Maybe we don't get the state tournament this year to, to validate it, but, you know, we can look back through and, and watch some stuff from, from different tournaments and, and videos. And, and you kind of, you kind of know those dudes, right? You know, those dudes that are a little, little, uh, maybe rough around the edges or, or, you know, they got that extra little bit of moxie and, and it's good people, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, man. I, that, and that, that, you know, that state tournament, it's a heartbreaker. You, you're not going to get to recruit it. You're not going to get to watch your kid. You were one of the four tickets, you know. You were gonna, yeah. you were going to, you know, you were getting that advantage that a lot of these coaches weren't going to get. Dude, like yeah. unless it's like the Ohio State staff, they were going to get in. It's on their campus, right? right. I mean, you got to know they're letting them in. And then right. you know, like uh, I heard some other stories about one of somebody for some recruit was going to give his college coach who he signed with one of his four tickets, and I was like, dude, there's like I knew of like four college coaches that were going to be there. You were going to be one of them. Yeah, so I was I was actually my plan was this. So with them moving the tournament to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, the plan was uh, I was actually gonna re I rented I was planning on renting a car, um, and as soon as the finals were over in Sioux Falls, I was driving back to Columbus so I could watch on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, Maddox would have, would have been, been wrestling on Sunday. I'm just gonna put it out. I I believe Maddox Simcoe would have. I don't know what it would have been sun, Sunday night, but he was gonna be yeah. one through eight. I, dude, I, I do too. And, and you know, there's one thing, I know he's my son and I'm a little bit biased, right? But, um, I'll say this, like, and, and you've got to see him wrestle different times in his, in his life. And, um, the dude finds a way to do some stuff, man. I mean, he, he bends funny. He can be strong. He can be flexible. He's, he's a competitor, you know, and, and probably the thing that, that I think is most cool to watch about him is, yeah, he loves to win, but dude, he hates losing way more. You know what I mean? And when he loses, he takes it personal. He goes, like, he does the work. He watches the film. Like, I don't even have to tell him what he's doing. Like, he'll come back to me and be like, Dad, I blah, 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 blah. You know, and I'm like, yeah, pretty much, man. You know, I mean, it's – and then we, we'll go work out. Like, so it's it's a it's a great thing for him. Um, but I definitely thought he was going to place, and, and I had every intention of making the 12-and-a-half-hour drive, you know, with no sleep and, and be a – Look like, uh, remember Ren and Stimpy, the cartoon when they'd be all bloodshot, like that. So, you know, flies looking like around. that watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was my plan, man. So, um, you know, it, it, it does stink, but again, I, I, I gotta say it, man, I, I this is much bigger than wrestling. And, and, you know, I, I just hope that, uh, I hope that, that, and, and we are, we are, you're starting to see people come together more and, and, you know, Maybe this is the thing that, that finally unites us and, and, you know, cuts all the crap between everybody. And, and, you know, we can, we can just be humans, good, good humans. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Well, listen, I got coach good ale to get to here at the five o'clock hour. You got anything else for me? No, nah, just, Hey, you know what? In the next couple of weeks and months and all that kind of stuff, you know, if you can keep doing this kind of thing, man, I, I appreciate it. I, I've been at the office today, you know, we're, we're on skeleton crew, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do like a, I'll give you a call sometime. We'll do a walkthrough of the building again, man, and just kind of show you some of the improvements we've done. And I'd rather show you in person, but if I can show you on, on video, that works too. Awesome. Joey, stick around here after we, uh, after I end this, uh, end this and, uh, thank you for the time man. stick around here. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot, Zeb. Thank you here. I'm going to, I'm going to end this broadcast.